You will see, in addition to the full championship final, a behind-the-scenes look at what goes on to make a major squash event a success. So sit back and enjoy the Scottish Open World Squash Challenge. Well, here we are. It's the finals day of the Scottish Open. Final between Chris Dittmar and Jahangir Khan. What a prospect. Joining me is Mark McLean, very special man in Scotland. He's the number one Scottish player, world number nine. Mark, you must feel justifiably proud about the events that have taken place. Yeah, it's been a superb week uh, here at the Exhibition Centre, Robert. And uh, I think the scene is set now. We've got a classic Pakistan-Australia final clash. And uh, I'm sure the, the crowds that's now gathering outside are going to be treated to uh, some top class squash. You must have been very pleased with your own performance during this uh, tournament, Mark. Yeah, I mean, obviously I'm delighted. I've reached my first semi-final of a ranking event, so, you know, it's been, it's been a dream week for me really here. And uh, the crowd has been absolutely fantastic. I mean, the, uh, pick, the uh, packed crowd on Thursday night and Friday night was just uh, getting behind me. It's superb. Well, there we have it. The final of the Scottish Open. Chris Dittmar, Jahangir Khan. Tonight is a special night. I'm not going to explain all about it to you, but I would like to bring two gentlemen out in front of the audience tonight who can explain just what is going on and what this ceremony is all about. I would like you to welcome two very special men in squash. Please welcome David Gebby, President of the Scottish SRA, and also Professor Raymond Miguel, CBE of the Scottish Sports Council. In fact, the Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to steal your thunder. Please, I know you'd like to say a few words today. It's a very special day. Thank you, Robert. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pleased to be able to be here this evening and officially present this demountable squash court. And I'm sure that you agree that it provides superb facilities for players and particularly for the audience. The council believes that every sport in Scotland should have a national centre suitable for international competition and national training. Now, thanks to modern technology, this demountable Perspex court provides world-class facilities which can now be enjoyed in various Scottish venues. When I first took up this appointment three years ago, my first duty was to go to a, a squash event and it was the World Junior Squash Championships, and it was held in Edinburgh. And I can tell you that you had Yang Shukan there and Anthony Hill, who we've just seen. And when I looked at the spectators that could watch, it was in a place that could hold 30 to 40. Now, here was Scotland bringing on world champions to the country, and only 30, 40 people can see that, could see them. So this now, ladies and gentlemen, has all changed today. And this new court will assist in attracting major spectator events to Scotland and will play an important part in improving television coverage and therefore uh, potentials for sponsorship. It is particularly encouraging that some of the world's top squash players have been attracted to this competition and are the first to use this new court. And of course, it's also gratifying for us in Scotland to see Mark McLean up there playing with them. I understand that the use of the court is already in demand from other countries and one inquiry has received, been received from as far away as Barbados. I should like to take this opportunity of congratulating the Scottish Squash Rackets Association for its vision and hard work in mounting the Scottish Open World Squash Challenge, which marks another peak in the development of squash in Scotland. The Council is confident that with the governing bodies development work, the new court, and further finance which the Council has committed to squash for the next year, the game in Scotland will go from strength to strength. 
Now, finally, I should like to wish the tournament organisers and the players every success in this competition and to hope that it will be the first of many world-class events to be held in Scotland. Thank you. Yes, I think we might get the scissors out now and perform the ceremony. Which of you young ladies? May I? Could I ask you? you to hand over the keys officially to David Gebby. Thank you very much. And one more. David Gebby has been a friend of mine for a long, long time. You're the envy of European squash at this moment in time here in Scotland. How do you personally feel? I've not waked up from the dream. I walked in here on Monday and uh, it's like a dream come true. Raymond is correct. Uh, three years ago, he sat in a, a bigger crowd than he named, but a small crowd nevertheless at the World Junior Finals. And I think those of us, and there are a fair number in the hall tonight who helped organize that, started this dream to have a world event. To have a world event, you require a promoter, we have one. You require a venue, SECC have provided us one. You require to get the players to arrive and that will bring the crowd. But frankly, without this quality of court, without the sponsorship from Scottish Sports Council, uh, this would never have happened. I'm still, as I was on Monday, enjoying a dream which is coming true. Thank you. I'd like to have a word with a particular gentleman now who is very famous to all the people in World Squash. Please welcome Michel Pouchot. <laughs> Michel, I know you and your family are the people who design, manufacture the court. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about the background, how you came to be so involved. Yes, we were involved in 85 uh, with the ask of the French Federation to design a court for, for the French Federation and for the European Championship by team and for the Guy La Roche Open, for the French Open. So we did the first one in 86, March 86, and it was a quite good success, I can, I can say <laughs> it. And after we had uh, a few sellings in Belgium, Austria, and we, we, we went to the South Hemisphere to, for, to go in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, Finland after for another European Championship and for the first time here in Scotland. Yeah. Tell me, how many courts worldwide are there? We have nine courts already. Uh, well, we, we are, yes, we have, and uh, they are all uh, five in Europe and three in the class atmosphere already. Uh, we're going, this one uh, is the nine and we, we are still building the tenth for the World Open in Australia in August, uh, next August. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. This man has done a great deal for our industry. He's brought about a court which unquestionably is the finest squash court in the world. All of us in squash are very grateful. Ladies and gentlemen, Michel Pouchot. Welcome back to the SECC for the Scottish Open final between Chris Detmar of Australia and Jahangir Khan of Pakistan. Our referee in the red jumper is Mike Fitchett and with him the marker, George Tasker. Well, what a prospect we've got here between these two players, Chris Dittmar and Jahangir Khan. And here, joining me in the commentary box, is Mark McLean, Scottish number one, world number nine. Mark, how do you see this game going? A couple of real tough characters. Yes, Lett. Yeah, fabulous yes, prospect, as you say, Love Robert. Um, there's going to be no love lost here. There's a classic confrontation between the Pakistani and the Australian. And you know, I really believe there's going to be uh, no holds barred here. 
the talk in the uh, players' lounges all week has been that Jahanga's looking fit and looking very mean. But also, he's considered to be a little bit of a blocker on the ball these days. Is Dittmar going to take that out? Is he going to go through the man looking for the ball? Well, Dittmar's been known to take no prisoners, so he'll be, uh, he'll be certainly going straight through to take that ball. Jahangir uses his body well on court. He's a classic player that uses his body to shield the ball and to play the ball around it. So um, I think we could have quite a physical contest here. Really. Probably both players, Mark, are going to be looking to settle down out. as early as they can. Hand out, one love. Yeah, that's right. I think that um, Chris will be eager to establish an early rhythm in this match and get into his stride and possibly try and work Jahengi around in the early part of this game. Yes, this is the early feel for the ball here. The players trying to settle as quickly as they can. But both of these players, Mark, are very experienced. They're not going to take long to settle down in this uh, atmosphere. Electric feeling here. Yes, absolutely superb atmosphere here at the Exhibition Centre. And as you say, they've been in this situation before a number of times. It's no nothing new to them, and they'll both know exactly what they want to do in the early stages of this match. Down. Hand out. One all. The score is one all in the first game. Chris Dittmar, just to serve. Of course, Mark, Chris Dittmar is, is the man who's come the closest, I believe, to taking the two great Khans in one tournament, uh, Jansha and Jahanga. That's right, back in uh, Malaysia in the World Open uh, 89, he uh, put Jahanga out in a classic semi-final match and went on to take a six-love lead in the fifth against Jansha in the final, only to run out uh, second best. Yes, yes, I know you've One done all. a lot of training with him uh, in London, Mark. Um, Chris Dittmar, he's a man who puts a great deal of effort into his training program. Very fit man, very tough man. Absolutely, Robert. I mean, uh, having played Chris, as you say, a lot in practice, I can vouch for the fact that he goes 100% even in practice. He is a true professional and, uh, you know, he's, he, he plays hard, he trains hard and uh, I think one of the great aspects of Chris's game is his mental toughness. You know, he doesn't give an inch, and you, you'll see you'll see from the early part of this game, he, there's going to be no cheap points for Jahangir. Of course, as no. these two players are settling in, let's have a quick word on Jahangir, a great man. Is he what he was now? He looks awfully good to me. 2 1. Well, he is looking in good shape. Um, there was six months ago when a lot of people were writing him off. He put on a bit of weight and uh, was looking as if he was taking things a bit easy, but. You know, he's become a legend in squash, and you, you don't get to where Jahengi has got without sheer class. And, uh, you know, he's always going to be dangerous. And uh, who can tell now? Maybe he can use this as a platform to go on to winning his 10 British Open title. What a prospect. 10 British Opens. The man really is something special. The game's settling into a pattern, Mark. You, how, how do you think this pattern's going to be? Is it going to be the attacking uh, Dittmar trying to control the tee? Yeah, um, just from these early exchanges, it looks like it's going to be a bit of cat and mouse stuff. And uh, Dittmar just likes to push the ball around the court to work his opponent into the corners and possibly hope to uh, draw the string, at the sting out of Jahangir's early attack. You know, Jahangir's game. Where's the big strength? I mean, he's got this great backhand drop short on the left. Yeah, he's got one or two great shots in his <laughs> armory, to be honest, Robert. But. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's probably the one he's most famous for, is that backhand drop the front. Uh, he placed himself in that front corner. He gets there up, up there so quickly, and uh, he's exerting so much pressure. And if you notice, um, the actual pace that Jahing is hitting the ball at, it's all hit low on the front wall, and it's very penetrating. The ball's never come in short, it's always going to the back of the court. And it's that pace that really uh, takes, it takes its toll at the later stage of the match. This is a good rally. Both players really feeling each other out, moving each other around the court, and all the court being used. Yes, let. He was clear. He was clear. That had to be pretty close to a stroke, I think, Robert. Well, Dittmar's not looking happy about this. Yes, let. He was, he was clear. Questioning was the point clear. with the clear. referee. Your, your yes, opinion let. there, Mark? Well, it looked pretty, pretty close to a stroke from where I'm sitting, Robert, but, um, you know, th this is a stage where both players will want to know exactly how the referee is going to interpret decisions like that, and... Uh, you know, Mike's taken a stance there that, that that's uh, a let ball and Jahangir did clear the ball, but uh, the only thing is the players are going to expect the same decisions in the next few uh, next few situations that crop up similar to that. Yes, I think 
one of the things with you players is that you always want the referees to be consistent. Even if it's one thing or the other, it's consistency you're looking for, isn't it? Oh, that's right. I mean, uh, yes, let. even if you're yes, consistently let. bad, Two I mean, uh, the worst thing you can have is a referee that's uh, drawing decisions out of a lucky bag. You know, you want a guy that's uh, he's going to uh, make the same decision in the same situation every time, even if it does happen to be the wrong one. Well, nobody's given anything away here. Yes, let. Yes, let. Again, did not get in the let. We could be looking at a long battle here. I think, Robert, there's uh, three points being scored, and that's probably just about five minutes squash we've had. It's a lot of power on that court at the moment. Both players striking the ball with a lot of venom. You can appreciate the noise that uh, the ball's making as it strikes the perspex, and uh, Jahangir really is just pumping that ball into that front wall, and it's, uh, it really is awesome power. Strokes is calm. Yes, Stokes yes. Can Dittmar's played the ball close to himself here, and Jahangir's picked up the stroke. Here on action as replay you can see, mark. Jahangir moves across, plays a cross court. Dittmar with a slightly slack shot into the middle of the court. Stroke. Yeah, that's a good stroke. Yes, let. Yes, let. Yes, Two I all. think a, a totally different situation. There was a lot of space on the on the yeah. side of, of the player. That ball was wide enough. Uh, Jahangir almost could have played the ball there, really. Uh, Need the player yet playing a lot of short shots. It's it's a lot of drives to the back of the court. Steady boats pulling their players forward. Followed by the drive there from Dittmar. Here we've got... Oh, lovely shot oh. from Dittmar. You can, you can see this classic forehand drop from Hand Chris Dittmar. Three, two. Works the ball at the back, gets his opening at the front of the court. Chop straight in. Yes. In this early part of the match, Robert, we're not going to be expecting too much front court exchange. Um, the players like to uh, to feel each other, feel each other out in the early part of the game. Make sure that uh, they draw the sting out, the speed of each other before they, they move the ball in the court, front court, too early. Yes, of course, they're both superbly fit men, aren't they, Mark? And at this moment in time, it's more a bit of nerves of butterflies than uh, great effort involved. Well, that's right. Absolutely, at this stage, uh, stage in the game, it's. Uh, Trying to relax, take a deep breath, and uh, hope that you can establish your rhythm. Down. Oh, that's a bad error. You better let on backswing. Yes, late. Three, I think two. we had contact ah. there. Yes, yeah, contact between the players. Yeah, we can see the ball. Where's Jahangir has gone forward here, and he's caught Dittmar's racket. Both players, of course, play, to play the ball so tight to the side wall, taking away the opportunity to do anything with the ball for the opponent. It's so hard to do anything on the ball, it's clinging to the wall, Mark. That's right. I think now, though, we've seen a new Jahangir from, the, uh, from six months ago. He's starting to look hungry for the ball in the, in the front of the court. He's looking for that volley. Not up. Ah. That's a great drop shot. Dittmar played himself in well there. 4 two. Again, again we see the classic Dittmar forehand drop shot. There we go, tight to the side wall, no chance. Yeah, I think we've seen a new Jahangir. He's looking hungry for the ball in the front. And, uh, more than ever now, starting to look like the Jahangir of old, where he was hunting that ball on the volley and looking to move forward at every possible opportunity. You have to ask, Mark, I mean, I know that uh, Jahangir got married this, uh, just a few months ago. Uh, the settling effect of married no. life, do you think that's been a, a difference to him? Well, you might be better uh, better Five set two. to uh, talk me through that one, Robert, <laughs> but uh, uh, it doesn't look as if it's had too bad effect on him. Maybe uh, that's where I'm going wrong, but, um, you know, <laughs> um, I think he's probably settled him down and uh, he's looking fairly relaxed as he's ever done before, but... Um, 
maybe getting a good uh, good square meal inside of him and getting his laundry done for him. Stroke to Dittmar. Stroke to Dittmar. Yes. 6-2. Ball coming back into Jahangir, giving Chris Dittmar. Cheap point there. And the war of attrition starts again. Moving each other around the court, looking for an opening. Cat and mouse game. I think we'll see the face of the game change quite rapidly. That's stroke a stroke. Dittmar. Yes, stroke ball Dittmar. coming back out into the hangar. Dipma quickly onto it and claiming quite rightfully a stroke point. I really feel there's a lot of importance attached to the result of this match, Robert. Um, British Open is, is obviously looming up in two and a half weeks and you know these guys have both got their sights set on that one as well and uh, you know, they'll be keen to know what sort of condition each other is, is in for that and uh, you know it's a, a big psychological edge to be won today I'll tell you that. I think it must be said also Mark that uh, there's never been a massive amount of love between the Australian boys and the, and the Pakistani boys maybe because of the international matches that they play. Yeah that's right I mean through the through throughout the years the circuit has been dominated really it must be said by the the uh, Pakistanis and the Australians and that rivalry goes back goes back a long long time and uh, I think it's as fierce as it's ever been at the moment it's a great pickup from Jahangir oh, superb rally this both players now using all the court and all their skills superb mixture of power and soft that touch looks like yes, a stroke yes oh. late seven two Fair play to the referee, though. He stuck to his early decision where he gave a let earlier Great on. Um, I've seen strokes given for that one, though, Robert. Yep. He was right on the back of him, wasn't he? Yeah. What we have to remember here is that the you must allow your opponent your, to be able to play the ball with a backward movement of the racket, of course. If you're crowding the player, it's a stroke. That's right. It's got to be 100% effort to clear the ball and give your opponent every chance to play it. Otherwise, you're going to give that stroke away. Here's a chance. Again, forward on that classic backhand volley from oh. Jahangir. Unusual mistake with the court open. 8-2. This is an unusual error from Jahangiri. There's a classic backhand volley forward, and there he snatches at this one, and that ball's gone to 10. Well, Dickmar's opened in a nice little buffer in a few points here. Time to make a push. That's going to be close yes, to the stroke. Oh. Yes, late. He was Eight well two. Clear. He was well clear. Oh, well, Jahangir certainly thinks there was enough interference yes, to merit a stroke there. Yes, late. You see, as I said, Robert, both players now, have, you know, they've they've realised what the referee's given for those decisions. So, um, you know, he's he's really set the scene for the rest of the match. Dink cross court from Dittmar, lovely touch. Yes, he picked the ball there from literally off his shoelaces, yeah, didn't he? He didn't even look worried about it either. Yes, let. Yes, let. Eight, two. Yes, ball was good. Dittmar with a six point buffer here. He's looking good, Mark. He's made the early break in the first game. Important the first game to get that under your belt. Absolutely crucial, Robert. He's gone, gone to a good lead, and Dittmar will be thinking now that. He can just close this game out, 15-7, 15-8, and he's looking good, you know. It's a great good shot oh. on the line. Lovely oh, lovely shot. shot there from Jahangir, driving the ball to the back of the court with great deception. Strong wrist mark. Beautiful. Jahangir's and moved to the front so quickly here at the counter this drop. Look at the speed he's got in there, straight down the wall. See you later, Chris. Chance now for the front, yes. Jahangir, on his draw, goes deep. Driving Dittmer to the back of the court again, oh. and... Oh, error. Hand out, 9-3. He's got to look upon that as a waste of an opportunity, Mark. That was a, a bad tin ball. It was. He made the, he made the opening for himself, and uh, Robert, I think Jahangir's got to be thinking now that he's he's clipping the tin a couple of times, and if he doesn't cut out these mistakes, then Dittmar's going to go through him. Got his tail up now, Mark. Yeah, Dipmar's running looking around this court, looking very relaxed. 
Yeah, he's looking fresh, Kate. Yes, let. Yes, let. 9 3. Let ball gives us 9 3. Dipmar serving. Chihanga taking his time preparing. Defensive boost. Here's a chance at the front. And into the neck. Yes. Beautiful shot. Superb neck. You can see the way Dittmar worked this opening. He's worked the opening at the front, set himself, lovely balance, straight in there, chop, dead. Making sure of a, a great Scottish final. Starting to happen for us now. Players mixing the game up. Lots of drives. Both pulling their player forward, using all the court and the delicacy. Starting to get in there with that drop, drop from Dittmar. No let. No let. 11-3. He's not happy with this. What do you've got there, in your opinion, Mark? Yeah. Well, yeah, I think it was a it was a fairly good decision to be honest. Jahangir looks disappointed that Chris has blocked him out, but uh, fair decision there by the referee. I think in fairness to uh, Mike Fitchett, he's under a bit of pressure today. Yes. The, uh, <laughs> the rivalry between these two uh, fairly intense and uh, he's going to be called in to uh, make a few very, very tight decisions. He's going to have, yes. his, have his cool head on today. Yes, he's, a, he's an experienced man though, isn't he? Oh, that's Mike? a beautiful oh. shot. Oh, that beautiful, beautiful shot from Dittmar. Rolled his racket over the top of that. Rolled it across the face of the court. Here we see it Trail again. Three. There we go. Rolled the ball straight across the fa face of the front court, and the ball died. Lovely touch. Physically a very big man with great athleticism, though, Mark. That's right. You watch Chris on the court now. He's always on the on his toes. He's always bouncing, ready to move off for the next shot. There he goes up the front. Ah, dang it! Here we see Dippon has been drawn out in front of the court and he had no chance there. Down the wall from Jahangir. Oh! Okay. Move of the hip. Sent him totally the wrong way. Classic deception. Yeah, I think... And out. 13-4. Here we go. Cross court, yeah. Ah. I think Jahangir would have dislocated his hips if he'd gone back for that one. <laughs> totally sucked in. <laughs> Oh, and there we go. Touche. <laughs> Beautiful. What you can do, I can do better. It's all happening down there. Hand out. 5 Here we see a classic forehand cross-court drop shot. Dies dead in the neck. Oh, ah. another shot. Hand out. 14-5. Ah, game Jahanga, ball. what is he thinking at this moment? A game ball against. Dipmar prepares and he serves. Big point. There it is. Well, That's I game. have to say it, he didn't even move after that mark. Winning ball, Dipmar, one game to love up. Well, what's he thinking first now, game Robert? Dipmar, uh, 15 5. He's been done 15 5 in the first game. And uh, I think as he goes back to his corner, Robert, he's got Umar Hyatt down there, um, giving him some words of advice. and. Uh, well, I think Umar will be telling him that, you know, he's got to move up the court. He's got to maybe try and counter some of Chris's attacking shots and, uh, you know, get himself settled in. And what about this man, Dittmar? He must be pleased with himself. I mean, what do you do at this stage? He's playing the right game. Do you just keep it, Mark? Well, that's right. Dream start for Chris. 15-5. Hasn't taken too much out of himself in that first game. I think when we see Chris go for it second game, he'll be going fast as he can. So, Dittmar taking a one-game-to-love lead. We'll be back with you in a few moments. Now, 
Sitting to my left is another special man on the world circuit. He's not only one of the greatest squash players the game has ever seen, Chris Dittmar. He's a highly ranked player, but he's also the president of ISPA. Uh, Chris, for you to come along, you're playing a twofold uh, job. You're playing squash and you're also representing ISPA. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about ISPA and what the Grand Prix circuit means to you players. Yeah, Robert, ISPA stands for the International Squash Players Association and uh, we basically run or control, if you like, the world tour. And it's, uh, it's very important for us to have a tournament of this calibre in Scotland. Now, whilst the Scottish Open has been run for many, many years, there's never been a Scottish Open of this size. And I, I talk of the money and, of, of course, the, the calibre of players involved. So it's very important for us. It's almost like new ground, if you like. And uh, I'd like to think that it's the start of many, perhaps, big Scottish Opens to come and that it will only get bigger and better. And that uh, I think we do play it also a twofold uh, sort of role here and that I think we promote we not only play here and hopefully have a good tournament but we promote the sport throughout Scotland as well well this all sounds very good let's find out a little bit about the personalities of the players that are going to be competing probably I could start by asking Mark a little bit about a young man that's sitting on my right Anthony Hill of Australia perhaps you could tell us a little something that we might not find in the brochures Mark yeah, well, obviously, Hilly's come through the qualification in the quarterfinals this, this week here at the Scottish Open, so, you know, he's done, he's done very well. He's obviously playing hard. Um, he's one of the uh, popular lads on the circuit. I think he, his motto would be that he plays hard and trains hard, works hard, and that kind of stuff. He's an all-Australian boy, likes a bit of sun and surf. Um, often spotted over in Ireland doing a bit of training and probably could sign a sponsorship deal with Guinness if he so wished but uh, they might go out of business <laughs> but uh, no he's done very well this week obviously in the Scottish Open to come through at the quarter final doesn't happen often from the qualification and uh, he's got a tough tough game tonight but he's playing well well welcome to Scotland Anthony you've done it the hard way you've come through from the qualifying and I know there's a pack of you young lads all fighting your way through perhaps you could tell us a little bit what it's like to have to qualify well, um, through the qualification, it, it's quite hard. You know, you've got to uh, get there a couple of days before the tournament, um, and all the boys are, you know, trying hard, trying to get through that last round of qualification because you know you've got to pay for everything, and there's no money until you make the, you know, the main draw. So all the boys are really itching to get through, and it, it comes, you know, a bit of a, a bullfight sometimes. You know, so it's quite tough. Sitting next to you, Anthony, is one of the very established stars of world squash. A uh, man from New Zealand, Ross Norman. Perhaps you'd like to tell me a little bit that you know about him on the circuit. Well, uh, you know, I've only known Ross for about two years, but I, I see Ross as one of the more older, mature people on the uh, on the circuit. Uh, you know, when I, I first got over here a couple of years back, uh, they all told me that, you know, he's got a quite a large swing, but I have a large swing as well, but I think Ross is a little bit bigger. And, uh, you know, just, you know, I think he's, uh, more sta he's a lot stable in the rankings than a like the more other people that on the circuit but um you know we kind of see him as kind of nearly a father figure on the circuit you know but uh <laughs> you know i've you know met him well and i've been up in his plane one time and uh, i could probably tell you a little bit of story about that i was up there with him and paul carter and uh we're kind of coming into land and uh, paul carter had the controls and I'm, at this stage i didn't know that paul was also flying and ross kind of takes the headphones off and he goes oh hilly we're just doing an emergency landing and I'm sitting in the back, you know, I've got my seatbelt like this and this little plane and kind of Paul comes in to land and I'm like pretty shitting myself in the back seat, you know. <laughs> so I didn't realise that, uh, you know, Paul had his licence as well, so it was quite scary with, uh, with Ross and Norms up in the plane. But, uh, you know, we had, a, we had a few close calls up in the air, but uh, I think he's, he's a nice guy, so. Ross, quite a nice sort of few words about yourself as a character on the circuit. You've seen these young lads come through and we've got a few of them sitting around with us today. Perhaps you'd like to give me a comment on the one that's sitting on your right, young Peter Marshall, the unusual double-hander that's absolutely sort of breaking onto the scene in the biggest possible way. Yeah, Peter's come through uh, very, very quickly in the last sort of uh, year or two. It seems that um, the average age of squash is, is getting younger and younger all the time. I remember when I first turned pro uh, about 12 years ago, the average age would have been about 28. Um, now I look back and uh, the average age today would probably be about 23 so you know I think um, that speaks for itself where squash is becoming a very very physical um, a tough physical game Peter is one of the few that is coming through um, or Peter is one of the many young guys that are coming through doing well on the circuit and uh, it is quite extraordinary the way he uh, hits the ball um, with uh, two hands 
um, it defies all coaching manuals and uh, it really does uh, it amazes the rest of us the rest of us players you know that um, he can actually hit a ball that way but obviously he's doing it and doing it well doing it right and uh, he's well and truly um, getting up in the world rankings Welcome back, Chris Dipmar. One game to love in front. First game. Crowd is starting to get involved in this match, Mark. Yeah, I think they realise uh, the importance of this game. And, uh, you know, it's intriguing. Dipmar's taken that first game so easily that uh, how's Jahangir going to come back, you know? Dipmar leads as the player one game start to love. Start the second game. A comment from you, Mark, about the court. Uh, playing on it, it's a bit different, of course, from the normal club court. Yeah, it's, it's slightly different from the, uh, the conventional squash court, but um, it's a beautiful court to play on. Uh, the push show, squash vision. And, uh, he took that ball out of the air, Mark, pulled it across the court. One love. Dittmar here, we, again, backhand volley, straight across the court, and the ball dies. Superb. Mark, you're saying about the court. Yeah, beautiful court to play on, and... Uh, I think from a, a spectator's point of view, it's a real breakthrough, you know, and uh, it opens up marvellous possibilities in terms of the numbers of spectators that can watch and uh, promote the game. This is a fe fierce opening exchanges in the start of the second. Oh, that's a bad error. That's not like the big Too man, low. is it? Certainly not. That forehand drop didn't make anywhere near the top of the tin. That was three inches off the floor. You have to say it, it's not tiredness. It's a lot about mind at this stage, Mark, isn't it? Is he mentally right? Oh, right another right superb right. powerhouse no shot. You see here, fair decision, good decision by Mike Fitchett. Dittmar Three into low. his forehand, kills the ball, hard kill. Jenge was not there. Jenge now is under severe pressure. Severe pressure. Yes, and uh, Chris Dittmar, not a man to let you off the hook once he's got you. He's an uncompromising man, isn't he, Mark? Oh, that's right. Um, he gets a lead and uh, he takes no prisoners. Thank you. Not Thank you. Ah, gentleman gesture there from Dittmar. Obviously, he hadn't yeah. picked the ball up. And Quietly uh, stepping back yeah, off the ball. Feet. Obviously, he plays very hard, but plays very fair. Yeah, it's not a man to take advantage. Jahanga seems to be a bit on the rack here, Mark. He's being moved around the court. Oh, oh right there. lovely. There it is. A classic Jahanga backhand drop. He's right on the top of that ball, isn't he? He was up here so quickly. Look at that. The pace on that. There you go. Straight up the front of the court. Into the net. Get in there. Thank you. Please. Yes, let. I feel, Mark, yes, we've, uh, we've reached a, an important feet. part of this match. We're one love up to Dittmar. Interesting start in the second. This is the time when, the, when he's hoping to obviously make a buffer of a few points. If he can, he'll be holding Jahanga. Well, that's right. He's going to try and squeeze points out as much as he can. And, uh, you know, players realise you get to two love and it's a, it's a long, long way back. I think what... Jahengi will be trying to do is to try and force Dittmar yes, into the back of the court. Keep Don't keep saying that. He's not, if I hit the ball, I'll kill the play. Don't yes, say he's two, three. clear. Don't say he's clear, right? Yes, Dittmar having a, two, three. a quiet chat with the referee. <laughs> well, that's one of his quieter chats with the referee, Robert. <laughs> 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 I think he was trying to say that Jahengi wouldn't have been alive if he'd hit that one. But yeah. uh, this, is, this is what you were saying earlier on. I mean, he's been consistent in his marking the uh, no, referee, no. though, isn't he? I mean, on this uh, on this clearance of the, of the, of the behind the player That's with right. the racket. Yeah, he, yeah, fair play to him. He has been consistent, but I think the players will be thinking they've been used to um, used to getting strokes in that situation. Yes. But you can't argue with it. He's given the decision. He's stuck to it. Down. Everyone after. Error from Detmar. Four yes. three. I wonder if the thought of that last point was still on his mind. That was a that was sloppy from him. 
Yeah, he, he doesn't give much away, and that's probably the, really one of the first uh, you know, er errors that he's made when he hasn't been under pressure. No, no. Oh. Immense power there from the Pakistani player. Immense. 5-3. Here we go. Jahangir waxes, but he just punches that forehand through. And the ball's gone past it, Mo. Superb power. See on that on that short swing of Jahangir, he's punching the ball deep. It's not a big swing. He's got the racket close into his body and uh, the power he's generating from that small swing is absolutely incredible. Never a man to write off, Mark. Down. He's done it all, hasn't he? And out That's right, he's been in every situation. He's uh, he's had some incredibly long matches and uh, has to be said he's had some incredibly short matches as well, but uh, You know, I think uh, we could be looking at, you know, a long match here. And uh, I've just got the feeling that Jahangir is starting to find his rhythm a bit. Yes, late. Four, five. Questioning that decision, Jahangir. Wasn't sure that Ditmar had it covered. Mm. He's not totally settled, I feel, Mark. I think he doesn't like being in, uh, being oh, in the rear. No. Ditmar opened that up. Beautiful drive and chopping the ball into the... Backhand Nick. You can see this. He set, ball. set himself up at the front for this forehand volley. Total control. Classic shot. To Dittmar. Yes, Stroke and in to that Dittmar. case he gets it, Mark. Six five. Well, the referees interpreted that one as a different situation. Jahangir not clearing the ball, not giving his opponent enough room, and uh, paying the ultimate price. Players content to play the ball to the back of the court. It's tight. It's got the opening on the volley. Yes, ah. yes let. Yes, let. Yes. Six five. And again, there you can see Jahangir. He moves the ball around his body so well, and he's blocked Chris out there. He's not a tall bloke, Down. Jahangir, but amazingly difficult to get around on the squash court. He seems to be able to manoeuvre the ball at the exact perfect, uh, perfect corner. And he's not a man you can give an inch to, is he, Mark? I mean, once he's in and he's holding you off, you're usually dead. Oh, well, that's right. You, you know, you can, you can work you around, the, around the court as if you're on a string at times. You know, he's just pushing the ball into the opposite corner where you, yes, where you happen to yes, be. Yes, let. Six all. And when he gets into that kind of rhythm, he's, he's pretty hard to peg back. Well, is he settling? Six all in the second. But one love to Chris Dittmar. Match is very evenly balanced. This is the time when... Neither player is going to want to give anything away. They fence in here. Tight to the side wall there. Although it's tough, there's probably no oxygen loss at this stage. They're both feeling good. Lots of movement in the legs, lots of spring. That's and Jahanga looking there. for the stroke. Yes, oh. Lee. Mark, a comment on that one. Six all. Well, I said it was a stroke. There's let's <laughs> being given. <laughs> I think Jahangir agrees with me, to be honest, if I look on his face. Yes. What do you reckon well, on I've this, Well, I've got to say, this looked look like a stroke to me. Dittmar tight the side wall, bangs it past his body, and did not clear that ball. He no, no. wandered into part of the ball there, I'm afraid. Yes, of course, the rule is you've got to allow the player free view. And seven six. That's right. And, uh, you know, when you've got two big blocks on a court, you know, you, you've got to be careful. You've got to give your opponent enough room or uh, you're going to be penalised. Boast, and that's ah. a let. No let. You could have played the ball. Oh. I don't think Ditmar's going to be happy with this one, Mark. No let. Seven all. Well, he stood on it and <laughs> held off. I've got every sympathy for Chris there. Um, you know, he played a beautiful forehand boast and uh, moved up the court, and Jahangir did block him out. Seven all. Points going up evenly. Oh. Very crucial stage of the match now. Seven all. Second game. You're not quite looking as honest to us as you've seen him. Jahangir's putting some power on the ball at the moment, Mark. He's hitting the ball deep. A lot of venom in his shots. Yeah, I mean, it's hard, it's hard to appreciate just watching this game. Just the, the strength of that forearm of Jahangir's. He's got a whacking great wristband on it. But, uh, <laughs> the power in that forearm is phenomenal. But if 
there's one tough man in the world, it has got to be his opponent today, Chris Dittman, and with Fire delicate rush. touch, both players now giving us some delightful squash. Mixture, strength, power, delicacy, it's Every all in here. Oh. Yes, let. Yes, let. Seven all. Ah. And as with a lot of classic long rallies, finishes with the let. going to start to get physically hard from here on in Robert I think it starts to uh, starts to tell yes and as the uh, players go into oxygen debt and the legs start to feel a bit heavier that's no. when the faults will come in <laughs> Dittmar forced to the back of the court doesn't get the ball up Jahanga picks up the point 8-7 eight, 8-7 seven. Eight, seven. Jahanga serving can Jahanga go his way back in this match Tactically, he's got to be one of the soundest players in the world. His brain's going to be thinking as much as his racket talking now, Bernard. That's right. Oh, stroke. stroke. Yes, it's got to be. Stroke to can. No doubt about that one, Robert. 9-7. 9-7. Two-point buffer. He's breaking away a little bit. Two points at this stage. Very important mark. Yeah, absolutely crucial. 9-7. Jengi will know he's got to take this game. He slips at the front there. Ball's gone up, though. Oh, Stroke here we go. Now, this is interesting. Stroke to can, 10 7. Again, the interpretation of this rule mark causes the problems with the yes. players in the centre of the court. Right. I think Chris was asking if the referee had a lucky bag up there and he's pulling that one out the lucky bag, but, uh, you know, again, you know, the situation looked as if it could have been a let, but uh, Mike's given a stroke. Oh, oh, beautiful wrist. Beautiful wrist. Good disguise, here, Mark. What can you say? The strength in that wrist. Here we go. Dittmar's moved eight, into the front of the court. Looks like a four one straight drop. Flicks it across the court. Down. No chance. Hand out. 11 8. 11 8. Four points from second game to Jahanga. This game is building. Crowd have gone very quiet here, Mark. Sensing it. That's right. It's like, a, it's like a game of chess, you know, they, they've uh, worked each other around and it's uh, become an intriguing ta tactical battle here, you know. Oh, Dittmar having to play a real wall both to get the ball back and yeah. Jahanga in on it. Chopped the ball into the backhand next. Jahangir is starting to look more comfortable now at the front of the court. Well this touch is looking good. Dittmar forced to the back of the court with that backhand. Jahangir moves forward and that's a winner all the way. So 12-8, second game. And again, tip for tat here. Dittmar sends him the wrong way, moving to the hips and the ball sent down the backhand wall. And out, 9-12. Again, that's a Dittmar wrist. Just straightening the ball down that side wall. Perfect win. Shot from the back from Dittmar, tight drop from Jahangir. Oh, he's not up for that not one. That one. That's no late, then 12. Good decision from Mike Fitchett there. Jahangir was not up for that drop shot. Lovely touch from Dittmar. Dittmar's closed him back, two points in it. Serving, 10 12. Oh, not superb up. disguise, pulled the ball across his body. Left hand Nick. Let's have a look at this one, Mark. Yeah, lovely, lovely backhand drop shot from deep in the court again. Dittmar across the face of the yes, court. Let. Absolutely yes, let. perfect. 11-12. Let ball gives us 11-12. One point in it. Both players here know the, how crucial these next few points are. Stroke to Dittmar. And then stroke. stroke to Dittmar. 12 all. 12 all. Jahanga won't be pleased with himself there. I think he's feeling the pressure, Robert. He can't allow himself to go two games to love down against somebody like Dittmar. Oh. But he forces an error. Perfect length brings about the fault. 13-12. It's a bad error from Dittmar. He'll be ruining that one, I tell you. He's, he's sitting there waiting to ret return service now, thinking... You know, that's a bad one. That's a bad one. Well, crucial moment sure for Chris Dittmar. Again, the players settle into their pattern, drives tight to the wall. He's got the opening. 
reception cool. coming from both players now, Mark. Yeah. A little flick of the wrist at the front of the court's going to win a, win a rally. Beautiful oh. backhand volley. Absolutely superb from Dittmar. So Moving cool. forward onto this volley. Here we see Dittmar moves forward onto the backhand. Total composure there. Well, 13 all. And of course, Mark at 14 all in these games with this point of rally scoring. The opposing player has a choice of one or three. That's right. What would you be going for, big man? I'm, I've seen you take a few sudden deaths. I tell you what, it depends how that 14 points won, but uh, you know, I, I think Dittmar would probably opt for one at this stage, but Jengi would go for three. You know? Oh, down. Fourteen, thirteen. Fourteen, thirty, thirteen, and Dittmar sitting on a second game ball. Jahanga can't let this go. Two games to love down. He's going to be in big trouble. Can't see an error coming from Jahanga in this rally. No, I think Dittmar's going to have to win this one. That ball is glued to the wall there. There's not a lot of daylight between it and the wall. Yes, you're quite there right, you Mark. Again. He's not going for anything. He's just pushing that ball hard up and down the wall. He's not doing much, but he's not giving anything. No. That is tight again. Jengi realizes two love down to Dittmar is an awesome task to come back, you know. As he's moved him forward. Oh my goodness, this is the one. Dittmar's got the, the attack is the in. That's it. Oh, oh great Jenga retrieve. picks it up. And they're back into the rally. Superb retrieving, Robert. Oh. Takes two special men to play at this level. Slept. And now, uh, as you said, Mark, a great rally. And what is it ending? A left. Some absolutely classic squash in that rally, Robert. We've seen a couple of pickups at the front. Absolutely awesome. Yes, Let, 14-13. Well, this is about mental strength at this time. Both these men have that in abundance. Front. This is it. Drives Again, Dittmar oh. works him back into the back corner. Looking for that opportunity at the front of the court. Jenga again. Opts for the deep, deep ball again. Well, when they go on the defensive, that ball seems, seems to get tight and tighter to the wall, Mark. Yeah, under pressure, these guys are really producing the goods. Dittmar showing patience, waiting for the opening. Not going to waste this opportunity. The crowd have gone silent. They're all sensing it. Both try to squeeze that error out. It's going to either bring Jahangir back into this game or close it out for Dittmar. It's a chance. Again, deep. Dittmar gets around him, two big men down there. I tell you what, there's a bit of sparring going on down there, they're dancing around each other. Waiting for one to go for it, still pushing the ball up and down the court. Neither one going in for the delicacy. The quality of length in this rally has been absolutely fantastic. Yeah. The ball is... Uh... I think we're looking here at the best rally of the game, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly the longest. I think the quality of squashing. Oh, oh yes, now. Oh, we've got that same situation again. It seems to be coming up a lot in this match. 14, 13. Well, I'm Game sure ball. Jahangi was hoping that the stroke was coming his way there to level the scores, but not to be. Again. Game ball dip mark. 14, 13. The tension stays. Neither player having a respite from this. It's a cauldron down there at the moment, Mark. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting to see that Jahangir looks mentally tougher than he's looked for a while. He's not giving anything away in this game ball down round. He's prepared to be patient. Looking for the error, both men. There's a chance at the front. Again, taking no risk at the front, Jahangir could have played that backhand drop and opted for cross court. I feel sure that uh, Jahangir is going to have to go for 
for a drop shot at the front, given the opportunity. And Dittmar's just not going to make an error, that's for sure. Yes, he seems to set a pattern here, hasn't he? Yeah, I'm going to keep this going till breakfast. <laughs> that's right. I think Dittmar said to him, well, mate, if you want to win this game, you're going to do it the hard way. Again, at the crucial point, the game goes on and on, and here's the attack. Hubbard gets on the oh. left-hand side. The attack's still on. Back to defence. It's a pretty furious pace they're playing at down there, Robert. Sudden explosion of speed and power, Mark. That's right. It all happens so quickly that uh, you get these front court exchanges and uh, both players so quickly on the ball, the front of the court. Phenomenal speed. Times like this, you're glad you did your court sprints. <laughs> I'm sure both these lads have done their court sprints. Oh, I think we're into a 90-stroke rally here, Mark. And when you think what's on it... Oh! He's looking... Oh! He picks up a let. <laughs> Again, that long rally finishes with a let. Yes, let. 14-13, game ball. It's all there now. It's the mental strength, physical strength. Well, this 14-13 uh, point has been going an incredible number of strokes. We've had three or four lets. And, uh, can't help but feel if Jahengi managed to get back in at this stage, that it would really shift the pressure back onto Dittmar. Of course, it was a big stroke before, but now with what's gone on, it's become a massive stroke. If there's ever a turning point in a match, this is it. Yes, you get those moments in a certain match, don't you, Mark? And this certainly seems to be just one. <laughs> the funny thing is, though, Robert, I think that both players completely realise the same thing. You know, they're <laughs> down there thinking. You know, this is where it's all going to hinge, you know? It just goes on. It's a war of attrition. And now, of course, it's, it's reached the legs. The, the lungs must be fitting it now, Mark. This isn't, uh, this isn't relaxed squash. They're really in there working. Yeah, I think they'll be hurting, but, you know, it comes to the end of a game like this and it doesn't really seem to matter because you just want that next ball to... Go up. Here's the attack. Oh. Countered by Dittmar. Dittmar just counting everything that Jahengi is throwing at him. 50 strokes passes. Another big one. No respite. Now, have we got an attack? No. Nope. Drives deep. it back. Intriguing. Cat and mouse stuff. Neither one want to give the opponent the front of the court. They're keen to keep each other pinned back, forcing the boast, the loose boast, and maybe to get onto it for a straight drop shot. It's riveting stuff. Excuse me, says Jahanga, and chases back for the ball. I don't know if it was quite excuse me, Robert, <laughs> or uh, there's someone else that was asked for. <laughs> That's a great length again from Jahengi. He's punching that ball in low to the back of the court. Again. This is truly amazing, Mark. We've gone into the realms of real pain now. Yeah, it's going to start getting tougher and tougher. 100 goes. The 100 shot rally has passed and it still goes on. There's no relaxation. Have we an attack? No. We're back to the attrition. Well, these are four of the ro longest rally I've seen for a long, long time in uh, low tin squash, you know, in Grand Prix squash. And to follow one another, Mark, it must be absolutely gut-wrenching for these guys. Well, they're working so hard. There's a chance. Here we go. Tight That's tight. Sidewall. No. Oh, oh here we go. It. They're That's in. Drive, and we're back again. Both players Amazing hold stuff. it. Oh, this is remarkable. Have we an attack? Here we go. Dip Maz off, and he picks it up. And that ball finished tight the side wall again. There's the attack again. Oh, Jahanga plays a reverse angle. Drop, and... Yes, oh, my goodness. 134 shot rally, and we have a left. Well, 
the crowd are loving that. Do you know, Mark, that's 224 yes, shots in two rallies, and we ball. haven't had a point. Again, Absolutely. game ball. I can feel a point coming through. Do you know, Mark, you could uh, you could cut the tension here with a knife. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely electric it is here. The crowd just on the edge of their seats. They know how crucial this is. I have to say, I wouldn't want to be making a refereeing decision at this stage. That's right. I think it might be what he oh. did. I thought that boss was going down and nearly stopped. Incredible stuff. I think, I think Mike will be praying for not, not to have a 50-50 decision to make now. <laughs> I hate to see grown men cry, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> not a seat to be in at this moment. And here goes the attack again. And he chops it That's in. Dead. Yes! Yes! What a shot from Gehanga. What a great man. And Dittmar goes for three. They go into 17 points. It's set three. Absolutely superb. Across the court. Backhand drop shot. 14 all on the 250 shot. strokes there mark for that point well there's some big points in matches but they don't come much bigger than that one Robert. No, let. You could have played the ball. oh I could, I was not no let 15 14 that's a crucial decision you know after playing 250 shots for one rally then you get no let it on the third sh stroke of the rally 15 15 14 Jahanga comes back Holds that point and now takes a slight lead. Beautiful. Oh, but Dittmar responds. What a shot down there. Oh, sheer power from Dittmar here. And again, works the opening here from Jahangir at the front of the court. But that's sheer power. Look at this. Drives the ball low and hard. Reverse angle and we're back at it. Dittmar trickle balls at the front from Dittmar. Yes, let. Yes, let. 15 all. I think Detmar feeling there that Jang, you're not giving him every chance to get in at that front shot. And of course, after those big points, it's hard to get yourself tight again, mentally up, because we're still into big points at this stage. Oh, they're all big points at this stage, Robert. Jahanga looking for the stroke. Oh. Yes, late, 15 all. He's, uh, he's not a man to argue with the referee, Jahanga, but he has got expressive eyes, Mark, hasn't he? <laughs> Well, he's a master of that kind of situation, Robert, you know, where he engineers the uh, mid-court there again, just making room for himself with his forehand backswing, and uh, again, oh, Dittmar yes, doing late. the same thing. Yes, late, 15 all. 15 all. You could share a pin drop. Backhand There's ball. the attack. That ball died, that ball died. Yes, it was, it was a great shot. Really chopped in by Jahanga. One of his great shots, of course. Roulette, hand out, 16-15. If there's Game one ball. shot that, you know, Jahangi is uh, he's famous for, is that backhand, backhand drop and backhand volley drop. He seems to be able to carve that ball in on the, uh, on the straight line. Well, here you have it. Jahanga's game ball. Roulette. And, and Dittmar just showing. Uh, no late. No late. Hand out, 16 all. And there's a look of amazement there from Jahangi. Now we have 16 all. Jahanga shows his displeasure, but it's 16 all, and we're talking sudden death here, Mark. Yeah, I say the winner of this point. point. Are we looking at another series of lengthy rallies? No, it's an attack straight away. Trickle balls from Jahangir, deep from Dittmar. He's on the volley again. It's oh. tight. Yes, let. They're getting tied up there, yes, Mark. Yes, let. 16 all, game ball. Again, two big lads in the middle of the court, and there's no way around them. You could slot a piece of paper between these two boys sometimes. Here's the attack again. It's a flip across court from Jahangir. Yeah. Straight ball. Yes, let. Yes, let. 16 all. Game ball. I'm sure Dittmar's heart will be going when he's asking for those lets. You know, he's just dreading the no let call at that stage. Yes, to actually stop on the ball and not get it would be cruel at this time. Oh, that's the error from Dittmar. Oh! It must be said, Jahangir's shot brought the fault. It was stuck to that wall. You know, I think after those protracted rallies there, that you know, suddenly it's got to Dits. He's gone for one. He just hadn't gone for anything 17, for the whole 16. match. And, uh, the games are one all. He's really had a blast at that cross-court nick, you know, and uh, totally out of character, really. Well, there we are, one game all. Just throw you on the ground. <laughs> Slam. Just 
Yeah. Sun, is it? Oh, no, no, or you can end up landing on the, if they dump you. Well, Peter, you heard the comments from an established star like Ross. Uh, you've come along at your first season. You've actually exploded onto the uh, onto the scene. You've made World 23. Tell me, today you're preparing for a big match against Chris Dittmar in the quarterfinal. How, how will you be spending that day preparing yourself? Well, um, I got up about nine this morning and then uh, went for practice. Uh, then I'll go along for some lunch. And then this afternoon I'll probably just be relaxing and uh, thinking about my game tonight. Tell me, what about a fear situation? Do you actually have so much respect for these guys that you're frightened when you get out there, or do you just go out there and treat them with the, the sense of youth and really get into them? Well, I think that's the best thing to do. You know, if you have too much respect, um, you know, it can work against you. So uh, I think it's just better, best to go out there and just think of them as any other player. It's probably a good uh, time now to have a word with Chris Dittmar, who can probably comment on the younger players. Well, Chris Dittmar, uh, not only are you uh, a world-established star, you also, in your uh, capacity as president of the ISPA, look after some of these lads. But I know that you're going to be giving it all you've got tonight. Perhaps you could just give me a comment of how you feel being so established, seeing these youngsters come through, showing you so much respect off the court, but none on it. Well, obviously, it's important for the sport to have uh, young blood or new blood, if you like. I think anyone that follows sport in general, Robert, would know that over the past 10 years in the sport of squash, it's been dominated by the Pakistani players. And uh, not that that's a bad thing, but, you know, obviously a, ch a change is good and it's great that we've got this group of young boys coming through. And uh, I think there's a group of four or five young English players at the moment who are very strong and, and with Simon and Peter here being the two main ones, I think. Um, we've got Anthony Hill from Australia who's leading a, a bunch of young Australian players as well. So, you know, in general, we've got some good new youngsters coming through. Uh, but at the same time, I'm sure if you'd ask Ross about it, it's up to guys like Ross and myself to keep them down at the, you know, at the same time. So we're, we're still as keen just because you get on a bit. Like I'm, I'm only 27. I don't think I'm an old man dead and buried by any stretch of the imagination. So whilst it's great that they're coming along, uh, I'd still like to sort of let them know where their place is. Simon Park yesterday had the win of his life. He took out Rodney Martin. Maybe you'd like to give us a little bit of a picture of how you see young Simon Park, the English player. Yeah, I think Simon's very talented. Uh, I think people have known for the last couple of years that he's had all the talent and skill. But I always make an observation. I think, uh, see, Simon's currently the world junior champion. And the biggest, uh, well, the most important thing for him will be that he's got to go from beating juniors to having to beat men. And they're not just men, they're not just big and growing up. They're also physical and they're tougher. Um, things like mental pressure come into it and perhaps the amount of training you're prepared to do whereas when you're a junior it's just that if you can hit the ball pretty well you'll probably come out on top you know do you see what I mean so and obviously at the moment Simon's adapting to that pretty well but uh, to become a world-class player and regularly have these wins um, Simon's gonna have to just keep putting the work in and become mentally tough and as I said make the transition from having to beat juniors to having to beat men and now we find Robert looking at another side of the event. Behind the scenes of a successful squash tournament is a massive beehive activity. Probably there is no more active area than the press office. Why don't we just jump in there and catch the boys for their editors, show just how hard they're working. Oh yes, this is about normal. I can see the boys are still hard at it. <laughs> Welcome back with the score of one game all. You've got to be thinking that this is the crucial game. Mark, how do you feel this one's going to go? Yeah, finally balanced and uh, Jahengi has clawed his way back the hard way. But, uh, you know, as I said in that last game, Robert, the, the pressure now shifts one right to all. Dittmar because he had a love chance all. there for two love and now he's sitting at one all. I'm sure Jahengi is now going to look to up the pace of this game. He's going to move forward in the front of the court. That was Hello. tight. Dittmar takes a long look at it. That's a nightmare of a start for Dittmar for this game. So there we are. One love, third game. Dittmar leading by the solitary point. And an immediate attack from Jahanga. Counter attack by, by Dittmar. And we're back into the same stuff again. This is squash of the highest possible order, Mark. Down. Absolutely. Another error from Dittmar, though. Two love. Two love, Jahanga. Jahangir has swapped his, uh, his Natty Reebok beach shorts for the conventional white ones now, Robert. 
Looking to make a clean start. Beautiful backhand drop shot. And again, the classic Jahangir. Three love. Back of the court. Works the opening. Dittmar, loose shot there. He's in like a shot. In like a shot. This man. Yes, Lent. Jesus, I'm it. getting no for them. You would have got the ball. I know he would have. I would have got the others. Chris having a quiet yes, shot with the referee. Not happy. If looks could happy. kill, Robert. If looks could kill. Free love. I'm glad I'm up here. Mark, those uh, those last rallies that we've just had in the in the last game, they must have taken a lot out of these players. Do you think this is going to have an effect now on the pattern of this game? Yeah. Oh. Lovely forehand drop Jang shot from Jang The play is like a man on Full fire. Long. You see, he's moved forward, Jang Yir. He's stepped up a gear. You know, the, the guys know that Dittmar's capable of playing yes, some lead. awesome squash in Full those low. early parts of the match. He, he'll exert some real pressure, but Jang Yir just seems to be able to step up a gear, whereas Dittmar does tend to sort of uh, blow himself out in an early part of the match. Oh, oh beautiful superb shot. delicacy from the big man there. Sucked his player and in. One four. And this again. Look at this for disguise. Disguise at its best. Down. Hand out. Five one. Chris on his forehand tins the ball. Five one. Jahanga. Nice buffer in this important game. You have to wonder: Is the man changing no. tactics? The new Jahanga walked on this five. course. He's a man with a lot of fire in him at the moment, Mark. Yeah, he certainly is. Fair let somebody move him. And he'll only take that service when he's ready to take it. Yes. We're not talking about a couple of inexperienced boys here. Two of the toughest men on the world circuit. That's right. And Jahangir seems so cool under pressure. Oh. That was tight. Looking down the wall. And that's a beautiful touch right down the line. You can see this from Detmar. Look at this ball. Just hugs that side wall. Not a chance of retrieving that. No. And no respite. Jahanga straight back in. Beautiful drive to the Under back. 6 3. Just pumping that ball deep again, Jahangir. 6 3. Detmar going for that cross court. Taking a few chances yes, now. No, yes, late. Oh, oh, oh. 6 3. Jahanga feels that his, his racket was impeded by Detmar looking for a stroke. I think Dittmar maybe knew that he was in the wrong there, to be honest, and uh, he's lucky to get away with a let there. There's a limit to generosity, isn't there? There's not much being given at this stage in the proceedings. Dittmar, no he's not happy seven with this. Three. He tried to prove he could get to the ball, going over the top of the man. Score is 7-3. Dittmar asking here that he thought Jahangir's moved in to play that forehand volley and blocked his path to the ball. and. You know, the ball wasn't a winner. I think he maybe had a case there, Robert. Well, I hate to bring it up, but I mean, I know in the changing room, people like Rodney Martin. No, no. Oh, superb shot from Jahanga. Let's just have a look at this, Mark. That was a great shot. He chopped it down into the neck. Eight, three. Look at this high ball onto the backhand. Oh. He made that look easy. Classic Jahanga. Yes, what we were saying, I, I know we, I spoke to Rodney Martin. He feels that Jahanga does tend to hang on the ball a little bit. And the players are not happy with it, That's certainly right. the Australians. Right, see, and he's starting to get no letted for uh, not going through at the ball. It's a chance for Dittmar. Ah, yes, he stayed right up on that ball, Mark. No, no moving off the ball at all. Just took it early. Crossed the court. And, uh, Gentle so Nick. positive, really positive play from Dittmar there. Crossed the court again. Fades that post through, that shallow post. Again. Yes, Jahanga. mate. 4 He's leaning into the big Australian, letting him know he's on the court. He's a quiet man, but he's got a strong personality on a squash court, Mark. Oh, yeah, he lets you know he's on there, that's for sure. You do, uh, must admit I've come off court after playing this a couple of times, black yeah. and blue. That, that was delicate from a big man, wasn't it? That's typical of the sort of shots this man can play. 5-8. Oh, that's right. He's in the ball into that right-hand nick. He just analyzed that power game with those with that touch game so well, you know, and uh, for a big guy, you know, he's amazing. 8-5, Dittmar. 
works his way around Cheng Yi again in the way of that ball. And again, oh, gets a lot of movement here. I think Ditz has realised he's got to go and get the ball. <laughs> attack and counter attack. Oh, oh yes, shot. that was tight from such a high ball. I think. I think Jahangir had a chance here and he, Six he might be regretting this shot here. He plays that forehand loose in the front. Dittmar just had to step forward. Dittmar, 6-8. Two points to drift of JK. Down. Oh, bad error. And out, 9-6. He won't be happy with that. Dittmar just going for too fine a margin here. He had a chance just to slot this ball in. He's closed the racket yes. face and gone for the low kill, and it's just clipped the top of the tin. Face says it all. The first oh. angle from Dittmar. Yes, let. Again, we've yes, got let. contact at the front Nine of the corner. He's not happy with that one, Mark. He feels that Jahangir was in his way and he could have played the ball. Yeah, I think it's a good decision by the referee there. He um, he played the ball back to himself, Jangi, but I don't think Dittmar was up quickly enough to get onto it. Ooh. Forehand kill, Dittmar picked it up so easily. Yes, what an amazing yes, pickup! <laughs> he just stretched out a leg and uh, uh. picked the ball up out the nick. Oh, yes, let. 9 6. See, this is where it gets interesting, Robert. You've got two guys now trying to exploit the referee in decision in the sense that, you know, Dittmar maybe hang, hang on that ball too long and uh, should have cleared it. And uh, they're hoping for the no let decision against their opponents. So 9 6. Score poised, one game all. Jahanga, little lead in this game. Hoping to stretch it. A point at this stage is a lot. Oh! Great superb reaction. Very yes! Nice. Let's chat through this here, Mark. That was unbelievable reaction in preparation for that shot. Brilliant anticipation from Dittmar here. He's gone cross court even before Jenny has thought about himself. Yes, let. Yes, let. 7 9. So Dipmar, 7-9 still, two points adrift in this third game. Vital part of the match. Here's a chance for Jahangir. Oh, that's... Yes, let. Oh. Yes, let. 7-9. <laughs> I think Dipmar might have a little sympathy with Jahangir, yeah? I don't know if Chris said to Jahangir there that uh, he was more than happy to settle for a let at that stage in the proceedings. <sighs> But again, Jahangir really manufactured that situation so well, and you know, one can't help feel that uh, he was unfortunate not to get the throw. Oh, ball almost dying in the back. No let. He could have played the ball. Jahangir felt he got a nudge. Could have played the ball. No let. No let. Eight nine. I think Jahangir feeling here that he caught his foot as he went through on. Could have played the ball. On Chris Dittmar. Of course, Jahangir. I'm sure that as Jahangi went forward to play that ball, he stopped his shot, and uh, I think there was contact. You know, there was interference, Robert. So you, c you know, you must. Think. Here we look. Can well, we see, let's see as Jahangi moves forward? He's caught Dittmar there on his foot, yeah, and he stopped his shot. I think Very unlucky, Jahangi there. In replay, that was and a fault, and then Dittmar Eddie. sloppily throws the ball out of court on service. Not something you see the professional player do, Mark. That's very unusual to see that happening, Robert. These points Pressure's are too on. hard to win. Jahanga in on this ball tight, lovely drop, and he's got Dittmar on his bike. Could have played the ball. Well, oh, ah, the wow. man, the man is shocked. No let. <laughs> Absolutely Andrew, shocked. Nine ten. Uh, you could and should have played the ball. No let. <sighs> you should have done. 
Should have played the ball. No well, way to play on. In that. fairness to Mike, I think he's seen that Jahangir came. If you watch Jahangir's come through, he's he's got daylight here. There he is. He's through. And does he have a look at that and say it's a oh, little yeah. bit tight? I might break my racket on that one. Yes, let. I think you possibly have yes, to go with the referee on 19. that one. It seems to be able to see the funny side of things, although he's on the receiving end of these decisions, though. Well, 10-9. There's smiles, but I don't think it's that easy at Jahangir out there. He's He won't be pleased with what the last couple of points have brought him. Yes, let. Yes, let. 9-10. <laughs> it's strange to see him showing so much reaction on court, especially over such a... These three points, one after the other, he's reacted, Mark. This is not like him. Yeah, I think... You know, that's indicative of the pressure that's on these these points. And I think when they go and starts to get tough, you know, that sometimes the concentration starts to wander a little bit. And Jahangir, he's maybe looking... Down. Oh! Jahangir forced the air out a bit, my leg. Yeah, I think Jahangir's maybe looking for the referee for a bit of help here. Here we, we have see it. And out, 11-9. Moves forward. And that's the backhand volley again. Detmar, error. For a big man, he gets up on the ball well, doesn't he, Mark? Both these guys are moving so easily around the court. The, the speed that both of them get in the front of the court, especially Jahangir, he just seems to be standing there. Now, no oh, no he there. will Fair not be there. happy with this. There is definitely a unhappy Jahangir Khan out there now. Having said that, it, uh, I think that's a good decision from Fitchett. Well, he can't believe it. I don't think he's taking this man out for a drink tonight. <laughs> not a happy man. What a oh, shot. Oh, oh, he was in on that. He cracked that ball into the Oh, superb. Absolutely superb forehand kill from Jahangir. And that's that wrist 12, you were 10. telling us about, We can Mark. look here. Ball from Detmar to the back. Jahangir gets the opening on the forehand side. Look at that forearm. Just chopped it. Wonderful series of recoveries. Drops forehand and drop. recover. Then the no, drive. He's not yes. get to that one. He won't get that one. Opened like a can of beans there, Mark. Wide open. 13-10. Well. <laughs> Down. Oh. No. Dittmar feels he was nudged. You played the ball. Oh, I realise that. <laughs> no lead. 14-10. Game ball. You played the ball. No lead. Dittmar feels. Well, look, here can we is, see here? It. Dittmar did have every opportunity here. Look, Jahangir didn't make contact until after the ball was made into the 10. You know, good decision from Mike Fitcher. Yep. Shown to be right. Well, here we are. Game ball. Game ball. To go 2 1 up. Jahangir, are we back into this 200 shot rally situation again? Oh. Yes, let. Uh -huh. Yes, let. Uh -huh. 14 10. Now we're Game getting ball. the looks. The skulls are coming out. Again, 14-10. Jahangir preparing to serve from the backhand court. Prepares himself, and we're off. Straight down the line from Dittmar. He's got the chance. Oh, oh there the attack, and he missed it. <laughs> Dittmar with the backhand, tried to drag it across the court. Tinned the ball, Mark. Jahangir. 15-10, takes a 2-1 lead. Game to Khan, 15-10. Khan leads two games to one.
We're back here in the SECC in Glasgow for the final of the Scottish Open. And what a final it's turning out to be. Jahanga Khan, 2-1 up. Mark McLean's with me. A comment, Mark. Can leads to yeah, a fantastic one. way to end Hello. this week's um, Scottish Open. It's been a fantastic week to squash and, uh, you know, the final is so well poised here at 2-1 to Jahangir. What a climax. Oh. Yes, let. Yes, let. Love all. Jahangir had him down the barrel there. Probably wishes he'd taken the ball now. Mark, what do you think Jahangir's thinking at this moment? He's going to want to get this squeezed out. He's 2-1 up. He'll want to get off the court as fast as he can. That's right. I think what Jahangir will be hoping for is that he can go as fast as possible in the early part of this game and get a, get a good lead established. Maybe go for broke a little bit. Again, no catches no Dittmar. No Jahangir no looking for the left. One love. Jahangir not pleased with this decision either, but can we see here we've got contact again. Jahangir plays that volley. Dittmar down the wall, and did Jahangir catch him? He did. Was there effort en enough made? That's the question. Fitcher obviously thought no. Not up. It's great land from yes, Dittmar. Great land. Well, if there's a man with the mental strength Too low. to come back, it's got to be Dittmar. Well, he's not finished yet by any stretch, and uh, Dittmar will be trying to gather himself now for an onslaught and to claw his way back in this match. You'd be thinking if you can steal this fourth game, then you know anything can happen in that fifth. You know, I mean, it's just a case of getting back here. Yes, let. Yes, Hanger. let. He's Too long. moaning that he's being nudged. <sighs> it's getting pretty physical again. Yes. Are those elbows of uh, Dittmar padded, Mark? <laughs> I think they're fairly pointed. I felt them the other day. Oh. Great oh, pick up wonderful. from Dittmar. Jenga moves forward. Counter drop from Dittmar. Tight exchange there. Oh, that's superb. This is brilliant squash. Cross the oh. Oh. Anticipation from Dittmar. This is a hard rally. Grueling stuff. Both players pushed to their limits in this rally. It's that's a superb that's rally. That's a let again. Oh, again ending in a let. Yes, but what skills, Mark, do in that game? Yes, yes, fast no, and let, furious let's have a look. rally here. Again, finishes in the let, you see, but the early part of that rally was frantic stuff, frantic oh. stuff. Well, 2-1 up Jahanga, but uh, yeah. not a man with a big smile on his face at this moment, Mark. Yeah, who would think he was in the lead and uh, the final of Scottish Open and looking yes, good? Let. Yes, let. Again. Two love. Uh, of course, Jahanga there, hoping he's going to pick up the, the stroke, gets a let. Of course, it can be argued that he held the racket wide and picked up Dittmar with that. These decisions are fairly difficult to interpret, Robert. I mean, I'm sure you're pretty happy you're up here in the commentary box and not down there where Mike Fitchett is at the moment. There's no hotter seat in this place mm. today. Oh, oh, superb. Superb. Jahanga, typical Jahanga drive. Moved into position, superb Again, footwork. Out, it was two. a speed at which Jahangir got into the front court here that enabled him to play this shot. See here from the back, Dittmar moves him forward here, but Jahangir was up on that so quickly. Look at that, down the line. Dittmar's on his bike, and he's running, but he's picking up the ball. Oh. Oh, court back will post. This court is the tough one. Oh. Court sprints. Superb deception from Jahangir. I think he was calling for a taxi at the end of that Two rally. Ball. Here we are. Let's have a look. Back wall boast. Good pick up. But he knows he's on the end of it. And Jengi's got him on that piece of string. And see you later. Yes, taxi let. for Dittmar. Yes, let. Two all. Two all. Fourth game. Jahanga leading by two games to one. Neither player are doing a lot wrong, Mark. They're playing brilliant squash. It's been a great game. Superb squash. We've got a classic final here, Mark. Down. Definitely. 3-2. 3-2, Jahanga. Let's have a look at that point. There we go. High in the air on his backhand. Dittmar in. He's usually so safe on that shot, Mark. The air is starting to creep in. Pressure goes on. 
course, the danger is you start to force the pace. I wonder, is this what Dittmar's doing? Is he forcing the pace and bringing out his own error? I'm sure in the back of Chris's mind, he's thinking that he's got to start moving Jahangir around a bit more. He's He's been on the end of a few bad rallies himself, and, you know, he clipped the tin with that boast there, and he'd just be thinking that he's got to move Jahangir around, Robert. Ball just staying in on the side wall. Yes, they're using all this court. <laughs> not an inch to spare. Superb pick up there from Chris Dittmar. Back wall both, and oh. Jahanga in on it, executes the ball. Superb. I feel Jahanga's mentally getting up here, Mark. 5-2. Oh, he just doesn't miss this backhand drop. You know, the back wall both, and it just looks so easy. That ball died in the neck, but uh, effortless. Yes, let. Now, oh. Right, given. Yes, let. 5-2. That wasn't very trying to say that the balls, the balls come wide out from the side wall and he wanted a stroke. 5-2. Jahanga serving. Two games to one up. Dittmar can't let him get ahead by much more in this game. Dittmar's got to be tighter. Oh. Front for Jahanga again. Jahanga stops. Jahanga stops. What a gentleman. Yes, yeah, so although, although it's a tough match, these boys are pretty fair. There's, there's, a, there's a touch of honour between them, Mark. Well, that's right. I mean, it's good to see, and uh, obviously uh, the guys are playing hard, but uh, they're not going to take any double bounces or anything like that. And uh, there's, a, there's an unbelievable respect amongst the two of them. I like to that great uh, well, group, so. Now Jahanga's got the bike, and he's moving around the court. Chris is executing. Yes, oh, he's done it. Shut up. Superb play from Dittmar. That was absolutely superb. He opened up the great JK there. There's a couple of drop shots here. One from the back from Dittmar there. Jahanga stretched forward, but this one, he wasn't going to stretch forward for that one. Trickle balls, but Dittmar oh. was up the front of the court. He what was power. waiting for that one. He was waiting. Set the trap, and he was there. Five all. Immense power from this big Australian. Five all. See, Dittmar is not going to be found one in many fitness stakes. Across the court, Hello. lovely wrist Jahanga again. Jahanga struggling. Dittmar. And Dittmar picks up another point. Six five. Look at this. Here we have Trickle it. boast. Dittmar across the court again with that wrist from the forehand. And Jahanga uh, caught a bit flat footed there. That was, tight. that was tight. That was tight. Saw the whites of his eyes there. Yes, they're using all this court and some. Moves him forward again. This time the forehand cross court from Jahangir. Oh, no, that's right. Yes. yes. This did not force the error out of him. The ball was just too tight. Seven five. Dittmar now into a lead, 7-5, fourth game but 2-1 down. From the back of the court, Jahangir, yeah, and again very fair by Dittmar. He scooped that ball up and uh, the referee didn't spot it, but... Uh, Hand out, 6-7. All credit to Chris, he stopped there straight away. Yeah, he's not a man to want to take something, but he's going to work like heck for this. Doesn't take, but he doesn't give a lot, does he, Mark? No, not a chance. I think Chris will be thinking now that uh, you know he needs he needs one big push now to get himself really back in this game with a with a good shout. You know, if, if he can take this fourth game, then uh, he knows only too well it be any Down. game in the fifth. Again, he squeezed an error from Jahangir at the back of the court. Hand out, eight six. Detmar's again found good length here at the back. He's just lobbed that back, and it's found the nick there. You couldn't get the angle to get that ball back. Important title in mind, Mark. Scottish Open champion. It's a big one, big Grand Prix event. These players are really not holding anything back. There's nothing to save here, is there? Absolutely. They know they're playing for ranking points here. and uh, oh. Very close. And, oh, lovely. Lovely forehand. <laughs> Let's look at that one again. Jahanga with a typical shot of his. 
Jet Marlow gave him the opening here. Just a little flick across the court with that wrist. Oh, Nothing superb. to it. Now, now that's Just interesting. Straight. Yes, Jahan goes straight into the back 70. of Dittmar. Dittmar's not happy. Dittmar not happy with that decision. Sidewall, Jahangir. Yes. Bit of elbow in the back there Bit for Jahangir. Just to let you know I'm here, Jahangir. And out, 9-7. 9-7. Two point buffer. Big Australian throws the ball in and we're off again. Yes, this is what we were saying, where the tiredness creeps in, the players and they get that much closer to each other, Mark. Frustration can creep in at that stage. It gets tenser and tenser, you know. And, uh, it's, all, it's all a tactical battle to see who can outmaneuver the other into a uh, position to, get, to drive the ball past him, really. That's Post in the neck, but Jenga gets it. Oh, three brilliant Straight shots, two line. great gets there. Dittmar working him now. This is a good rally for Dittmar. This is a great rally. Oh, oh, and the error. Uh, he opened it up, and he did not execute it. He Chris did the work. And out. Chris will be nine. gutted here. He's let him off the hook. He did all the hard work. There was the easy one. He missed it. He missed it. Now, stroke. Oh. now, stroke to can yes, he's picked all. up the stroke. Referee believes he was impeded. Detmar's going to say hello good. here, I think, but... Uh, he's asking for consistency, I think nine that's all. his moan. And that's a crucial point as well, takes Jahangir back to 9 all. and Detmar was looking for a let, and Jahangir was looking for the stroke. 9 all. not a place for those with a weak heart to be. Loose one. It's a loose one. Now the attack of Dittmar. In it goes. He's got a counter attack here as well. Drop counter drop and lucky. Oh, both yes. players, both yes, players, not all. giving each other that much room to get through. You feel there's a couple of islands out there on times mark, okay. don't you? Right. <laughs> yeah, there was a, a big Dittmar island that front left at one stage there. Third whip. Jahangir diving for him. His racket just a few inches short. First time we've seen Jahangir a little bit sloppy in his movement. Just didn't quite get around. Maybe didn't see the ball till a bit late. Beautiful backhand volley from Jahangir. Oh, oh now. now. Yes, late. You pushed him as he was about to play. That's what I said before. You'd already Chris it. knows what happened there. Yes, let. Yes, let. 10 9. He hadn't played the ball when you played. Dittmar trying to say that Jahangir yes, actually played nine. the shot. From the right. Good decision again from Mike Fitchett. From the right, 10 9. I get the feeling that Dittmar was trying to prove a big point here. Still maybe feeling about an earlier ball. Oh, that's right. I think that uh, Chris was somewhat lucky to get away with that. He Pushes his way into Jahangir's back there and uh, didn't give him a chance to play the shot. Chris, 10-9, needs this game to kick it into a fifth. That's a loose one for Denmark. Piles it deep. Great reaction from Denmark and uh, Jahangir. Uh, 
11-9. Great reaction volley from Dittmar in the middle of that rally. Perfect time to take a two-point lead. 11-9, Chris Dittmar. Fourth game, 2-1 down. Jahanga oh, chops that one. And then into Dittmar yes, to prove the point. 11, I can get it, he says to the referee. <laughs> well, he's got most of them so far, to be fair to him. Two superb athletes, Mark. Yeah, um, Dittmar obviously uh, I've been trained with him quite frequently. I know how hard he works and uh, I've seen him do some absolutely awesome sessions on a Versa climber and uh, you know he's not, he's not gonna be found lacking when it comes no to the end of this match. Oh. No let it there though. He doesn't argue. No let it walks and back. Ten eleven. Jahanga serving. Ten eleven. You know these boys well, Mark. I mean, they have respect for each other, but uh, not big friends on the circuit. Oh, that's right. They're not big buddies on the circuit, but, um, you know, there's an immense amount of respect at the same time, and uh, both have done so much in, in, terms of, uh, in terms of squash over the years that uh, they know exactly what they're up against. But they don't room together, I gather. Not as yet. <laughs> not up. That's a tight ball from Jahangir. That ball clung to the forehand wall. You can see here, he just open face, chopped it across, tight to the wall. Well, Jahanga's seen his opening. 12 left. Is he going to push? This is typical Jahanga stuff. Oh, that was tight. Dittmar just pulled, pulled it off the side wall. There's nothing to get out there, Mark, is again. there? Oh. Strength, strength in that man's arm is amazing. And the attack. Moves forward. But Dittmar, yes, yes. yes lit. climbing Looks all the back lead. of Jahanga, gets his lead. <coughs> Certainly made enough effort to get through to that one, Robert. Yes. <laughs> Left side. Dittmar just well, appealing against an earlier pickup from Jahangir. He thought maybe he wanted to clip the 10, but uh, Mike Fitchett saying no. You have to wonder, is this perfect mental preparation for this big point? We're off. Recovery from Dittmar, that's tight. Moves in for the volley. I sense Jahangir's got the feel for this. Up in the pace a bit. Yep. Getting tight, and in goes Lovely the drop, drop. Dip, but no Jahangas let. threw him. No let. No let. <laughs> well, let's have a look, Mark. Yeah, well, we can Jahangir see this drop happy. shot. I think Jahangir felt the inevitable was coming, no let. No let. Drop Hand shot, tight the side wall. wall, but Dittmar was slightly in the way, but I think the ball was probably too short. Oh, oh again. That's a third shot from Dittmar. Dittmar there. Creaming the ball into the left. Detmar showing 15, real 12. character here. I mean, he's moved forward. Look at that forehand volley. Tight to the wall again. And there you go. Now the swing. Detmar picks it up. Yes, let. Yes, let. 13 12. Wow. Well. Again, Jahangir had a chance there. He's incredible knack of knowing exactly where his opponent's standing when he's playing the ball. He moved that one across court so well. 13-12. Are we going yes, into let. five? Yes, let. 13-12. Again, 13-12. What wouldn't he give for a couple of points, Shermar? Well, he's going to give everything for these two points, I'll tell you that. Roll forehand. A good width from Jahangir. He's got the chance at the front. Bars up, down the line. That's tight. Oh, That's superb squash. Jahangir's on it, superb like squash. a panther. <laughs> this that is one of the tightest rallies of the match, I'll tell you that. And tight uh, ball there. All. Incredible pick up from Dittmar. And but he couldn't anticipate that one. Jahangir working the open from the previous drop shot. Oh, no error. 
Now, that's crucial. That was a big error. 14 13. 14 uh, 13. Jahanga. Ball was up there for Ditmar, and he's he's clipped the turn, and that is very bad, very bad. We're looking. Championship point. 14 13. Jahanga serving. Oh, and he hasn't picked it up. It. We've got a champion, Jahanga Khan, Scottish Open champion. Well, fabulous match. Two wonderful athletes. They've given us a great game. So, Jahanga Khan is the 1991 Scottish Open champion. This isn't a formal speech. I hope it's like by way of a chat between ourselves, the players, and all of you that have come along and supported us so famously during this week. I know a lot of people have worked very hard behind the scenes. I've been telling you on a daily basis about the video we've made. But the people that have worked, I hope they're appreciated. They certainly are by the players, people like myself. I'd like you, the people in Scotland who have come along and given your tournament such terrific support, to know some of the faces that have been working so hard behind the scenes to make this such a special, not only Scottish, not only British, but a world event. And this is, ladies and gentlemen, a world event on the world circuit and very much in the calendar. Could I please welcome onto court the tournament referee, Mike Fitchett, and his referees and markers. Ladies and gentlemen. Easy one to mark, Mike. Our tournament director, a man I've got to know quite well. He's quite a character. He comes from an incredible background of squash, very much a Scotsman, very proud of what he's done here. He's a quiet man, but like most quiet men, he gets on and does a great job. He's done a superb job this week. He's made us all feel very, very welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Sinclair. I was in Wales, I received a phone call. Two men rang me up and they said, uh, Robert, we'd like to come down and spend some time with you. They did, they spent about a week with me. We became from then quite good friends. They told me about a dream that they had of putting on something up here. They said, let's have an all perspex court, let's have a, a Scottish Open, let's have something prep. No, there's no way, it can't be done. They did it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to welcome them onto court. First of all, Robin Smeaton, Executive Director of the Scottish SRA. Great friend of mine, ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Scottish SRA, David Gebby. <laughs> Just before we do the presentations to the players, I've been asked at this stage, and this isn't scripted so all the other people won't know this is even happening, but I believe they'd like David Gebby to make a presentation at this stage to Jack Flynn, the international referee that's come all the way over from Ireland. He knows nothing about this. Have we got it? Yes, I believe it should. David. Now. You might wonder what we do in the nights. It's been very quiet. Mark and I have been in playing cards most evening, just reading quietly. We did bump into a couple of young ladies occasionally. I'd like you to welcome them onto court, the two Wildcat girls. <laughs> the 
This is a very, very magnificent setting for the tournament we've had. I've got to know the man that runs the setup here. He's quite a character, he's a squash player himself. Ladies and gentlemen, to make the presentations, I would like you to welcome Jeremy Sale, Chief Executive of the Scottish Exhibition and Conference Centre. <laughs> Jeremy. Could I just, first of all, I know you'd like to thank the tournament director and of course the tournament referee. Okay. We've reached the stage where we bring on the men that have made this such a fantastic event. First of all, I would like you to welcome a man who's done a great deal for squash. He's a superb player. I know at this moment in time because he's so competitive, his chin is down a bit, but he won't stay down for long. He's quite a man. He's a great friend on the circuit. Ladies and gentlemen, Australian Chris Dittmar. I can't think of a more fitting champion, and I don't retract from Chris when I say this, for the first Scottish Open champion, a Grand Prix event. Ladies and gentlemen, he's now continuing to write the record book. The greatest player of all time, surely. Jahanga Khan! Jess, before we make the presentation, I wonder from yourself, Jeremy, a comment about what's happened here. You must be such a happy man. Well, we've been delighted to host this event. We've had some fabulous squash. We've had record crowds early in the week. And I think we've proved we're an international venue. And we are obviously like Trevor Marshall as a promoter to come back next year. And I think in two or three years, it won't be a pipe dream, we could be hosting the World Squash Championship. That's quite a prospect. Let us have the runners-up prize. Jeremy, would you please present that to Chris Dittmar? And our new champion, the trophy and a small envelope, Jahanga Khan. <laughs> 